I think we both are on the same page on this and have been for some time. I think, honestly, and I've said this for really several years now, the point of no return for the American people has, has come and gone. Uh, it's, it's past. We are now at a point where we must prepare to defend ourselves to survive individually and on a family basis, perhaps a neighborhood basis. But the idea of going back to the ballot box to restore America, to rehabilitate it, to somehow recapture it is really rather futile, to put it mildly. There's a trend developing now. The Patriot Movement is no movement at all. Uh, And Jack and Margie Flynn, who have a very fine or had a very fine patriotic newsletter, have announced they've quit. They've hung it up. They're going in a different direction now. And let me just, if I may, Gerald, read two paragraphs from their final newsletter, which was written after about a six-year period of them watching and waiting and hoping that America would wake up. It says, With great disappointment, we tell you that this movement, for which we hoped, has not taken place. And today the vast majority of Americans are even more ignorant indifferent, apathetic, and stupid than they ever have been. America is in a precipitous decline, and the angle is getting much more steep and severe with each passing day. It is with great regret that we announce that this is our last newsletter, that we will be vastly decreasing the work we have done for the people, and we will all but withdraw from active involvement in the so-called patriot movement. This movement is no movement at all. Or, said another way, there is no movement in the movement. With the exception of a few people and a few sincere groups, it has been reduced to a total fraud and a money-grubbing sham, replete with shills, provocateurs, planned opposition, leaders, many of whom foist a hypocritical, filthy con game centered around making money off the backs of the gullible, naive people, and distracting them from the cause of freedom and justice while leading them into pits of despair. Our last newsletter by Jack and Margie Flynn, Independence Day, 2011. That's just a small excerpt of it. I have it up in my featured stories, but pretty cogent words, I'm afraid. Yeah, pretty accurate as well. Uh, It's very disheartening. And uh, my feeling is, and we're going to be writing about it more in the upcoming uh, summer edition of the Trends Journal, which should be hopefully out (laughs) at the end of next week or the beginning of the week after, uh, is that the only way we see out of this, and it's no perfect solution, but there's nothing really perfect in life, is direct democracy. Let the people vote. We don't have a, a representative form of government. The only people that the governments represent are the people that give them the most amount of money. They call it campaign contributions. Adults call it bribes and payoffs. And for the only, if if you go back and people, I know the, the, the reaction is, well, listen, if the people are so stupid and ignorant and out of touch, imagine what we'll get. Well, we'll get exactly what we have now. It's not going to be any worse. But it could be better. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Go back to the TARP bailout in 2008. It was running 501 against Mm -hmm. bailing out the the too big to fail. Mm -hmm. And they passed it anyway. Go back to 2006. Remember those Wimpocrats, those Democrats? They voted in the Democrats back in, threw out the Republicans because Mm -hmm. they wanted to end the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They voted for the other head of the two-headed one-party system, (laughs) and the wars continue. So the only way I see out of it is a direct democracy on major issues. Let these public servants really play the role as public servants. I'm tired of people, these politicians, telling me what I should think. I can think for myself. And I don't need a leader. These people couldn't lead me across the street. Right. Play the role of public servants on issues of the war, issues of education, issues of bailouts, issues of even, you know, gays in the military. Name the major issue. Yeah. Let the people vote. At least we will really get what we deserve. You've made a very important point. They not only uh, 
tell people what to think, they insist on it. Oh, yeah, right. Don't you know that I'm smarter than you? Yep. Don't you know who I am? Harvard, Princeton, Yale. You know my life, bullets, bombs, and banks. Got the white shoes and all. Yep. And anyway, so that's the only way, Jeff, that we see out of it. And we're also working with uh, Jim Rogers, yeah, you know, the the financier, mm-hmm. and he's his he's pushing for what he calls "gov at home." Bring the senators and congressmen home. They don't need to be in Washington. Good, I like that. And and they could this way they're out of the reach of the lobbyists. It'd be very difficult for the lobbyists. They'll have to spend a yeah. lot more money yep. going to fifty states. Yep rather than having them write in a pen where they could go to all the time. And they're within reach of the electorate and their constituents, and that would exactly. scare the hell out of them. <laughs> so, that's, yeah, so, so that's what we're working on, and, and that's the major push that we're moving How do we do that, Gerald? To. How do we bring them home? How do we force them to come home? Well, this we is, this? we're getting a lot of responses from people in, in very different fields uh, that are asking how they can help. People that are very savvy with the internet, legal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and it's it is a grassroots movement, and it's starting now. And with someone like Jim Rogers, uh, it, it can happen. And and the other thing is, the other argument I get is, well, you know, is it safe to vote online? Look at all of the cybersecurity and breaches that are. Oh, happening. for the congressmen and senators to vote online, no problem. They can pick up the telephone and back it up. They can fax it. They can tri- exactly triplicate and, and, their and votes. For the peop- and for the people to vote online, absolutely. You know, and and is it is it going to be any less safe than going to your local precinct with some precinct ward over there that? They they rig the elections anyway, yeah, lest yeah. we forget about uh, hanging chads. I love the idea of bringing them home, boy. And and here's a here's a, a vote date on a particular bill, and yep. outside the state house are uh, fifty thousand angry <laughs> angry citizens. Exactly. Let's see let's see him vote. Yeah. Let's see him vote. Exactly. So his his website is govathome dot com. Uh huh. And we'll be working with Jim, and, yeah. we're, we're, and that's going to be the first step working toward my belief in, in direct democracy. And the Swiss do it. They vote on all the issues. Mm-hmm. And who's the, if I could ask anybody out there that's listening, name me the name of the president of Switzerland. Not a chance. Not a chance, because no. it doesn't count. No. The people count. Yeah. And and the other line that I say is that when people say is 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 voting online safe, if you could bank online, you could vote online. Good. If you could build, if you could move yeah. trillions of dollars every day around the globe mm-hmm. by by electronics, you could you guess yeah. what? You could vote online. Yep. And this will break the two headed one party system. They could become our public servants rather than us serving them. And I, I like this guy, what's his name, that uh, little weenie out there in Wisconsin, that little tough guy that's never worked a day in his life, uh, Ryan. Mm-hmm. What's his name, Paul Ryan? Something like that. Yeah, the guy that wants to push through this, this uh, all of these... Uh, these There's so many of them. Entitlement cuts. The egomaniacs. Yeah, what uh, is he buying, Six, $600, $300 bottles of wine? Something like that. Yeah, They're all, yeah I'll do it. Hold on, we have to pause for just a second. Uh, very interesting idea. Get these politicians. They don't have to be back there to vote. They can do their work at home. Home work. Bring them home. Get them out of the, the shark tank of all these whining and dining and prostitute bribing, blackmailing lobbyists and APAC and all these other organizations that run so much of this country. Bring them home. That's a good idea. I like that. There are people who say, well... Internet voting, well, we can't trust it. Well, folks, I, I'm sure you, you folks listening understand that nothing could be more corrupt than the current voting system we have now. Uh, ES&S, uh, Sequoia, I think one of the companies owns over 90% of all the electronic voting machines now. So, yeah, I'd, I don't think it get any worse, Gerald. Uh, do you? No, and again, we'll get exactly what we deserve. Because we don't have a representative form of government. They're, they're, they're only representing the people that give them the most amount of money. And, and the reality is, too, if they're talking about all these budget cuts, think of all the money that would, would be saved if we can cut away 
these ridiculous polling places. Open them up. You know, let the people who don't want to vote online going there. But we could go way, way back. They could be much cleaner elections. And the the other reality of it is that the major parties would be losing control because the people would vote. Couldn't agree more. What's the uh, what's the pulse as you make the rounds of the of the talk shows, of the TV programs, and so forth? What do you sense uh, these days of the so-called anchor people, the interviewers, those who are talking oh, to they, you? They're the same. You know, we, we just we, <laughs> I, I call them the prostitutes. No, no. They don't. Yeah, you know, they're not. You know, there are a couple of cool people out there that really know the deal. But they're working for the man. You know, they're living in what they can say and what they can do. Mm-hmm. I'm beholden to no one as you are, and, and and it's a very different type of atmosphere. And by the way, we're we're putting much more content, video content, on our website trendsresearch.com. So when you subscribe to the Trends Journal, uh, I'm doing uh, trends in the news features twice a week. Yeah, video commentaries. Yeah. Right. And so what we're doing more and more, and I'm bypassing more and more uh, the major, me- the the mainstream media because it, it's just it's not it, it's almost not worth my time anymore. It, it's so discouraging. And the, oh, the, I'd go. The, it's disgusting, is what it is. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. sure. And Absolutely. what we a, press, a trend alert, as you well know, we just sent out uh, on the uh, uh, the whole meltdown that's going on in front of us. I don't give financial advice, but I can tell you this one. Anybody that wants to speculate in the market, go long on gold before Bernanke makes a speech. You go back to March 27th when they had the first press conference, and the Fed chairman, before he uh, left his, his, his little dog and pony show behind, mm-hmm. gold prices went up $20 an ounce, right. and silver shot up $2 an ounce. Well, when's, on he, Wednesday, when's, he, when's he going to talk? Excuse me? When's he going to speak? Well, he, he spoke on Wednesday, uh-huh. and the same thing happened. Gold prices shot up and hit new highs. Because what's happening is the world knows that the United States is devaluing its currency. It's the only way to keep this Ponzi scheme going. Sure. And that's why you're seeing gold prices hitting all-time highs. And there's no end in sight. And this is a global meltdown. It's melting down in Greece. It's melting down in, in Ireland. It's melting down in, in Italy. It's melted down in Greece. It's melting down in Spain. There's no way out of this. What's, go- what's going to happen when Greece formally defaults? It already is in default, but when it formally says no, uh, rather like Iceland, Iceland Nothing. is. I, I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Iceland is still alive, folks. Uh, exactly, and that's what they all should do. What we're looking at, Jeff, is the total collapse of the economic system, and it's not only in Italy. It's not only in the in the in the, the European Union and in, in the U.S. China's next, and people are forgetting that in 2008, when the panic hit, China has been dumping in you know trillions of yuan to keep their Ponzi scheme afloat as well. So you cannot keep continue to build economies on borrowing, and this whole concept they're talking about the debt ceiling. How about the, how about the how about the debt seller? Anybody talk about that? Rather than increasing the debt ceiling, how about going deeper into the debt seller? 